Hello everyone, my name is Dale Widener from HQTS Group and we welcome you to our webinar on textile and apparel labeling requirements. Today we will present a comprehensive review of labeling regulations in the USA, the EU, and in China. At the conclusion of today's webinar, you may download a video of this presentation for internal training purposes or a separate PDF of this presentation. Most of us understand the importance of labeling. Textile and apparel labels are an important source of information for the consumer regarding the proper use of textile products, um, information about the materials, the source of the products, and these may play a significant role in a consumer's buying decision. Integrity and accuracy in labeling are important in building a positive brand image and trust in your product quality. So the items we will cover in today's presentation include the current legal status of regulations in these three countries, the industry definitions, we'll outline the competent authorities for each, and then we'll discuss an introduction to different categories of labeling information, uh, for example, fiber composition, care instructions, flammability, um, country of origin, apparel sizing, and then others that are specific to each country. And then finally, you hear our pitch, how HQTS can help you navigate the maze of labeling requirements. So first, how are textile products defined? Well, generally, they're divided into the following four categories, fiber, yarn, fabric, and actual end products, including such things as apparel, home textiles, decorative textiles, and similar products. So for your reference, the major laws and regulations set forth for labeling in the USA um, are found in the Textile Fiber Products Identification Act, the Wool Products Labeling Act, the Fur Products Labeling Act, and 16 CFR Part 423, which is the care labeling of textile wearing apparel and certain piece goods. In the EU, the laws are set out in the textile regulation uh, the General Product Safety Directive, in China, the Product Quality Law of the People's Republic of China, and under China's GB law, including uh, T5296.4, uh, Instructions for Use of Products of Consumer Interest, um, especially Part 4, Textiles and Apparel. Now, many other countries have followed the lead of these major um, entities, the USA, EU, and China, and have either adopted matching and or similar regulations um, to the ones that we've listed herein. So the authorities that are responsible for enforcing labeling laws in the USA are the Customs and Border Protection and the Federal Trade Commission. In the EU, it's the European Commission. There are four authorities in China that enforce regulations regarding textiles and apparel, including labeling requirements. The first is the AQSIQ. The second is the CIQ. The third is the Quality and Technology Supervision Bureau. And finally, the State Administration for Industry and Commerce, as well as local administrations for industry and commerce. All of these are involved in um, enforcing regulations regarding textiles and apparel in China, including uh, labeling requirements. So first, we're going to talk about labeling information. Um, you see in this list the key categories that are common to most regulatory requirements in the three countries we're discussing. Um, these major information categories include fiber composition, care instructions, uh, flammability notifications, country of origin, apparel sizing, and there are others that are specific to each country, which we'll discuss in more detail later in the presentation. Generally, textile and apparel products sold in the USA have to include the following information uh, on the labels, fiber content, country of origin, manufacturer or dealer identity, and care instructions. 
So the label must also include the company name or registered identification number, also known as the RN. This would be of the manufacturer, the importer, or other distributor of the product. The registered identification number is issued by the FTC. Where products are imported, the label may state the name of the manufacturer or the RN of the importer, wholesaler, or retailer. So in this slide, we see the major regulations for fiber composition labels in the US. These include the Textile Fiber Products Identification Act, which uh, covers man-made fibers and natural fibers, as well as the naming conventions and definitions for these. Also the Wool Products Labeling Act and the Fur Products Labeling Act. Now most textile products that are used by consumers in the USA are required to include the fiber composition label. The label must contain each fiber name and the percentages by weight in the product that each fiber represents. Both natural fibers and chemical fibers should be labeled with their generic names. This ensures that it is easily understood by the consumer. Now this only applies to fiber composition in yarns, fabrics, apparel, and other household products that consumers will interact with. Non-fiber substances, including pl plastics, glass, wood, metal, or in some cases leather, especially those that might be used, for example, in accessories, are not required to be listed on the label. There are some exceptions to this and we'll cover them later in the presentation. The sequence of fiber comp composition listed on the label should be in descending order. For example, for a product that contains 55% cotton and 45% rayon, it should be labeled as shown in the table below. This shows cotton 55%, rayon 45%. Now we've shown another way that can be, list, that can be listed, which is 55% cotton and so on, because the word order of the material and percentage on the same line is not important. So both of these uh, renderings would be correct. The actual fiber percentage listed may not deviate from the percentages on the label by more than 3% of the total fiber weight of the product. Using cotton, again, as an example, if the label indicates that cotton is present in 40% by weight, the actual tested amount may vary from 37% to 43% of the total weight of the product. If it falls outside of those tolerances, it must state the actual percentages. Products made exclusively of one fiber, such as cotton, should use the description of 100% cotton, pure cotton, or all cotton. For textile products comprised wholly of one fiber, the tolerance is 0%. The care label must contain user care information and instructions. It must be attached to the item in such a manner that it cannot become separated, and it must remain legible during the useful life of the product. In this slide, you can see all the major laws and regulations in the USA regarding uh, the care label. The Federal Trade Commission has established rules regarding the care label requirements and it mandates that care information shall be provided by uh, text instructions or symbols or both according to the ASTM D5489-96C standard. Whether the words or symbols or both are used, they must appear in the following order. This includes a type of wash, water temp, cycle recommendations, any bleaching instructions that apply, drying instructions, ironing, any warnings, dry cleaning, or warnings about anything that could uh, cause damage uh, to that particular item. The major legislation for flammability of textiles and apparel in the USA is the Flammable Fabrics Act, FFA. Under FFA, the US CPSC has established standards for the flammability of apparel, vinyl plastic film that is used in apparel, carpets and rugs, children's sleepwear, mattresses, and mattress pads. The major laws and regulations are referenced on each line of this slide for your benefit.
So while we're talking about flammability, let's digress for a moment and talk about the uh, regulations in the EU and in China. In the EU, there is no unified law um, or regulation regarding textile flammability. Um, these are formulated by individual member countries if they exist. In China, the same is true. There is no regulation regarding textile flammability on the label. Okay, going back to USA labeling requirements, let's discuss the country of origin requirements. Products that are covered under the Textile and Wool Act must be labeled to show the country of origin. Now, this can include several things. For example, imported products must identify the country where the products were processed or manufactured. Products made entirely in the USA of materials also made in the USA may be lab labeled made in the USA or an equivalent phrase. Products made in the USA that are of imported materials or components from other countries must be labeled to show the origin of those materials. Products that are manufactured partly in the USA and partly in other countries must identify both countries. Now here's a note on FTC rules and custom regulations. US Customs and Border Protection has country of or origin labeling requirements that are different from those in the Textile and Wool Act. For example, FTC rules do not require labeling until a textile product is in its finished state for sale to the consumer. So textile products imported from an intermediate state in an intermediate stage may be accompanied by an invoice with the required information in place of being labeled. However, Customs may require that an unfinished product be marked with the country of origin on the label. Manufacturers and importers must comply with both FTC and customs requirements. The Textile and Wool Act also requires that clothing labels disclose the fabric's country of origin. A product can be labeled made in the USA only if it is made in the United States and is comprised of materials from the United States. If the materials used to make the garment were imported, it should be labeled made in the USA of imported materials. There are no requirements in the USA for apparel size on labeling as it is voluntary. However, guidelines have been established uh, under ASTM and are shown in this slide. So let's move on now to discussion of labeling requirements in the European Union. The EU has aligned laws in all member countries under the textile regulations number 1007-2011 for fiber names and related labeling and marking of fiber composition for textile products. According to the regulation, textile products must be labeled or marked before they can be sold. In fact, fiber com composition information must be provided at all stages of processing and commercial distribution. All products containing at least 80% by weight of textile fibers, including raw materials, semi-worked products, Worked products, semi-manufactured, semi-made, and made-up products are covered by this regulation. The regulation does not cover sizes, eco-labels, wash and care labeling, all of which labeling is considered voluntary. A country of origin and social ethical labels are currently under discussion in the EU. Now let's talk about fiber composition. Products and components that contain at least 80% of textile fibers by weight must carry a label clearly identifying the fiber composition and indicating any non-textile parts of animal or origin. For example, products made of only one fiber should say 100% pure or all of that fiber. Products containing unused wool should be labeled with virgin wool or fleece wool. Products composed of two or more fibers, the label or marking must indicate the textile fiber content of each by percentage. The composition of the main lining of a garment must always be stated. 
This labeling is not compulsory for components accounting for less than 30% of the total by weight. For textile products with non-textile parts of animal origin, for example, maybe buttons made of um, antlers, the laboring, labeling or marking must include this statement, contains non-textile parts of animal origin. Other information may be included on a voluntary basis, provided it is not misleading to the consumer. No further requirements are specified um, with regard to identifying components such as leather or fur. Now let's talk about care labeling in the European Union. There is legislation providing guidance on care labeling. However, it is not mandatory for textile products sold in the EU. However, the European Textile Association recommends the use of care labels as a manufacturer can be held liable under another EU directive, product liability directive, if a problem occurs related to care of the product. Care labels may consist of symbols and logos only, but additional text is allowed. The care symbols used under ISO 3758 are based on the Genetex labeling system and the symbols are registered as international trademarks. Genetex includes 18 member countries, and the national committees of those countries are giving a, given a mandate to represent Genetex in ensuring the correct use of care labels in their countries. The care symbols used under ISO 3758-2012 consist of five main treatments and shall appear in the following order. First, washing, bleaching, drying, ironing, and professional textile care. Now let's take a moment and discuss the eco label. While not mandatory, this is an increasingly important label in the European Union. Created in 1992, it encourages the production and consumptions of goods and services that are environmentally friendly. The regulation guiding eco-label standards is the Okio Tech Standard 100. An independent organization, the European Eco-Labeling Board, awards the label following certain ecological criteria that take into consideration all stages in the product life cycle. While this label is not required, many companies may consider the use of this label as a key brand strategy. The label will be awarded to products under the following conditions that substances with harmful effects on the environment have been limited during fiber production, that the risk of allergic reactions has been reduced, that the properties related to shrinkage, color fastness, drying, friction, and light exposure are similar to conventional products. Now let's talk about apparel sizing in the European Union. Uh, label information for apparel sizing in the EU is voluntary, but there are guidelines that have been set in the EN 13402 series of standards for labeling of apparel sizes in the EU, and they're shown in this first list. They basically cover three approaches for the um, labeling of sizes of uh, apparel. The first is body dimensions. This label states the range of body me measurements for which the product has been designed. For example, a bike helmet, which uh, may state the, indicate the head girth. The second is product dimensions. This label may describe certain characteristic dimensions of a product. For example, with the jeans or pants, it may state the inner leg length. And then third is an ad hoc size. This is uh, information on a label that states the size, number, or code that uh, bears no obvious relationship to any measurement. For example, there may be a size four dress or um, a t-shirt may be sized XL for extra large. So now let's talk about China laws and regulations as they relate to labeling requirements for textiles and apparel. Why should I be interested in China regulations? Well, many foreign companies are finding additional opportunities to market their products in China, some of which have become quite popular. So it is good to understand the requirements for textile and apparel products placed on the Chinese market, 
because these are subject to a number of mandatory quality and safety requirements uh, that are found under the national GB and other professional standards. And these are somewhat different from those in the USA and the European Union. Now on this slide, you'll see the major laws and regulations that apply to textile labeling in China. So first, let's talk about the permanent label. This is a label that must be permanent, cannot be detached, and must be legible throughout the product's usable life cycle. The information included on this label must include the product type, and size. It must include the fiber content in accordance with GB. It must include care instruction and washing instruction. The name and address of the manufacturer in China. In the case of products imported to China, it must include the registered name and address of the agent or importer or dealer and list the country of origin. It must include the product name uh, based on the national industrial standards. Uh, must include the effective product standards, the safety category as established under GB, the use and storage precautions, this is actually an optional information, the certificate of quality qualification, uh, which is declared on the hang tag, and then the quality grade. Now, for example, let's look at the labeling for a down jacket, and this would be fairly typical. Um, again, as required under Chinese law, it must be, um, it must be labeled in uh, simplified text, sim simplified Mandarin text in Chinese. You see the first one, as uh, the translation shows, is the product name. Two through five indicate the various uh, fiber composition. Um, six is the product standard, seven the safety category, um, eight is the quality grade, nine is the qualification certificate information, and 10 through 11 shows the, detail, the details of the manufacturer of this particular product. With regard to fiber content, the major standard is the GB um, slash T29862 um, textiles. Um, specifically the identification of fiber content. Now regarding products comprised of one fiber, the regulation states that no textile or apparel product may be described as 100% pure or all unless it is exclusively composed of one fiber. Now products composed of two or more fibers shall be disclosed with generic names and percentages listed in descending order by weight. For example, if it was 87% cotton, that would come first, then under 13% polyester. Fiber content in decorative accessories do not need to be listed. However, if the area of a single part or total area of several parts of the same fabric exceeds 15% of the product surface area, the total fiber content of those parts shall be indicated with the exception of interfacing, padding, and liner cloth. The major standard for care label of textiles and apparel in China is GB T 8685. Care instructions are to appear according to the following sequence, washing, bleaching, drying, ironing, and professional care. According to GB uh, regulation, care labels must consist of symbols. If a text description is included, it must be in simplified Chinese text. Additional languages are optional. Now, when it comes to apparel sizing, the labeling should be done according to requirements of each GB regulation as shown on this slide. In this table, you will see a basic comparison of labeling requirements for each country that we have discussed today. Uh, we are not going to take the time to review it right now, but we invite you to do so at your leisure. Um, if you download this video, 
um, presentation or the PDF at the conclusion of this webinar. And again, this is kind of a general comparison. It doesn't cover all of the uh, various uh, possibilities that you may uh, face when dealing with labeling requirements. Now, I think we can all agree this is a lot of information to digest in a short period of time. Some buyers rely on their supplier to handle labeling. And while this works sometimes, other times it doesn't work so well. But keep in mind that as an importer, in most markets, you are ultimately responsible for compliance with local regulations. So how can HQTS help you navigate the confusing maze of regulations around the world? Now, a little about uh, the background of HQTS Group. HQTS is one of Asia's oldest and largest quality control providers. Our services include quality control inspections, factory audits, supplier evaluations, consumer product testing, production control and management, quality control consulting, and supply chain services throughout Asia. Backed by the industry knowledge and experience of nearly 1,500 professional staff in more than 20 countries, HQTS is well suited to be your partner in quality control. In addition, HQTS QAI is a U.S.-China joint venture of HQTS that operates some of China's leading privately held testing laboratories. Our labs are accredited to international standards for testing a broad scope of products to ensure compliance with regulatory requirements for all major global markets. Regarding textile and apparel labeling and testing, our team provides label consulting, including design, review, and advice for all textile products. Of course, labeling requirements are only part of the regulatory maze. You almost confirm your product complies with all applicable substance regulations, such as REACH in the EU and CalProp 65 in California, USA. These regulations restrict lead, cadmium, azodized, and other substances that may be found in fabrics and other components. HQTS is accredited to perform textile and apparel testing, both physical and chemical, as shown in the list here. Yes, we believe HQTS is your best choice to help you navigate this disparate regulatory environment. Just a little bit on our qualifications. Uh, they include international accreditations and certifications, high level involvement in standards committees, and long time memberships and involvement in key industry organizations and groups, in some of which include those listed on the list here. We really want to thank you for joining us today. We hope this information has been helpful to you. We invite you to download the entire video presentation for your own personal viewing or for inter internal training purposes at the link below. You may also download a PDF copy of the presentation there. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact us at the information that's shown on this slide. Again, thank you for joining us.